Hey, Marilla and Ben, I to see you guys just came in. Okay, while we wait for people, more people to come in, I'll just go ahead and introduce myself. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Cameron Irby. I'm a part of the, su the support team at Decisions, and I will be the host for your Lunch and Learn this afternoon. If you have any questions, please feel free to raise, raise your hand if you have any questions or post your question in the Q&A chat. All right, let's see the ones in the chat. We have a department that would like to have their task notifications sent to a group email. I'll check a box called group at email.com. When any one of them uses the link in the email, it would ideally log them on as themselves. They're using the sign on and then allow them to complete the task. You know, you can sign the group to a group it's working that way now but i believe that in order to do what they want i will need to create an account for group at email.com they do not want emails sent to their individual email addresses but rather only the group box can i assign the task to four people three individuals in a group but only have the notice sent to the group Okay, so we just want to know if we can. The main thing I want to know is what will happen. I know I can create an account for group at email.com. Right. And I know I can assign a task to it. And it will email that email box. Then if Amy clicks on the link and they have Active Directory single sign-on set up, it will try and log her on as Amy, I believe, and then tell her that she can't complete the task that belongs to someone else. Is that correct? Right, that's correct. Okay, so I wanna know if there's a way around that. Hmm. So we just wanna send notifications only to the group. Mm -hmm. But yet any one of the people that's in the group can click on that same link and go work the task. Yeah, I think to do that, we might need to set up guest accounts or allow the guest account to, to be a part of that assignment. Let me let me just look at some docs real quick to confirm that, uh, at least for assignments. Well, and I can submit a support ticket. I just 
thought maybe you know someone had tried to do this before so yeah i want to say we can accomplish that with guest accounts um, and so a guest account would be an account that doesn't belong to anyone is that correct right so yeah. basically the same as if i created an account for email at email.com or whatever i said called it yeah it would function the same way so if the user still clicks on it in the email and they're using SSO. Mm. Either that or um, actually, because I think either way, if they click on that link, it'll still go to their account and have them work on the assignment. Right. So can I assign it to four people and only have one of them get the notice? And if that happens, does it have to be your own assignment that you click on? You see what I'm saying? Like the yeah. link is the link specific to that one account so that no matter which other person clicks on it, it's gonna tell them they can't use it. Well, the link is specific to the assignment. So whatever mm -hmm. assignees can work on that assignment, it'll go through normally or, or like open that assignment normally. But if that that user doesn't have, is not an assignee for that assignment, it will tell them, it will give them that, uh, that warning saying, well, this isn't your assignment. Okay. I believe there's a setting, maybe I'm wrong about this. I thought there was a setting that says that you can kind of override that says, even if the system says it's going to email me, I don't want them. Because that would work too. I can just have each person log in, say they don't want the emails, and then only have the group mailbox get them. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with the setting. Is that and a I setting on the assignment? On. Yeah. No, it's a setting in the user preferences at the user level. Like an account setting. Yes, I think. Let's see. Problem is I don't have Active Directory, so I can't set myself up and test it. <laughs> well, AD is just like a, a regular email password. So I think a regular account with like any local account would work. So if I set my, I create myself two accounts, send an email to one, and then log into decisions as the other, you're saying I should be able to duplicate that? Yeah, one way or another. Um, but I don't think you'll be able to open that assignment. Okay. Uh, Trying to see if I see a setting for that under accounts. I do not. I wonder if something we can set up in the email response job or the when we send out the email, if there's like a flow that we can use to check, um, check if the users are in, a, well, if we want to, I guess we could probably 
filter the the accounts we want to send the the assignment to if there is a flow for that for the send email um no i'm just using the regular email assignment flow i can change that but i'm not doing anything with it now Yeah, because that way it would be assigned to those users, um, but they just wouldn't get that email if you can find a way around that. But then I still have this, would I still have the same problem then? So Amy, Bob and Carl, whatever I name the people mm -hmm. and the group all get the assignment. Right. So it doesn't matter if Amy, Bob or Carl clicks on that link, they'll all be able to use it because they were assigned it. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Um, but it will lock the assignment once one user clicks in. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's not a problem. OK. Um, but what I'm thinking, if we did set up a flow to send those emails, like say a, like a private flow or the start run step flow mm -hmm. to send out the emails, um, then I think we could we could filter who it sends to directly. But that's just me speculating, to be honest. Okay. But I think that would be probably our best way forward. Is to have those those users assigned to the assignment so that they can work it. Um, but have a, a on step run flow that sends the emails where we filter out um the users that uh, we don't want it to send it to, just to send it to the group, to the group email. Okay. And that group email either needs to be a guest account or a physical account that I create knowing that there's not a human being attached to it. Yeah, or is this like a, a email listing, like a group listing account that'll send it to them? Well, I already have that. They already have a group account that sends it to each individual's email box. They don't want that. So I have a, a group created in decisions that has each of those people in it. Mm -hmm. So for but, your use case, you want to send it to the group email. Um, just send out the, the assignment to the group email that will send it to them individually like I don't like want Gmail to will handle that end like Gmail yes. will handle who it sends to not decision yes correct correct yes. so in that case I think you just want the email I don't think it matters um in decisions who's a part of that group because Gmail should handle who it sends to right um, but what I'm saying is like does mm -hmm. it have to be a user because it's an assignment can I assign yeah. it to an I think email it would be, address that's not a user in decisions. I think it would need to be a user like that okay. uh, group account email would, would need, need to be, be a user. Okay. yeah so that Gmail can handle that on Gmail's end mm -hmm. or what have you but yeah I think that I think that will get you in the right okay um there's some approvals that need to happen for them to have the group email box. So if they approve that, then I'll put in a ticket for the details on the flow run, I'm sorry, the on step run flow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Okay. And then I had a second question. That's also for me. Yes, go ahead. So um, the one it's in the chat, okay, it's about the, so I am setting up a new project to onboard a client. Okay. So the sheer volume of data and whether it's related to the account or to the person lift, uh, lends me to believe that I need to have more than one data structure. Okay. One, and... More than one kind of main data structure. I know they have to have a common element, all that stuff. I'm not to that point yet. But are there any, is there any documentation or any best practices around that I don't know that any of them will be primary because some things are related to the person, some things are related to the account. 
Yeah, I mean, um, what kind of, I guess, data are we trying to store? So it'll be, I mean, it'll be standard onboarding things. It's just that the way it's for financial services. So it could be someone that has one person that has multiple accounts. So you don't want to say, I don't want to link it to Cameron because there will be, there could be one account. It could be six accounts. Cameron might own one account. Cameron might be the co-owner on a second account. So I need them to be independent of each other, sort of. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know if there's any particular ways that I need to set that up other than having a common element so that I can link them together. I know that. But other than that, are there any caveats, any sample projects you can send me that will help me make sure I design my data correctly? Um, I can look up some documentation uh, that describes that. Okay. But yeah, you would just need that uh, PK or primary key value to relate those two together if you wanted to. Okay. All right. So there's no specifics because the one project I have in production has one giant uh, data structure. Mm -hmm. And the, the new one will dwarf the other one, which is, I've already been told is rather large. <laughs> yeah. Like it does. So I want to split them out from the beginning, but, and I want to make sure that I split them out correctly. Right. So instead of having those nested data types that can get pretty large. Yeah. Just kind of go through and figure out natural groupings for them and then tie them together as necessary. Yeah. We should have docs on the. Okay. Just and I haven't looked the... in the, in the um, documentation. It just occurred to me when I jumped on this call that I could go ahead and ask. So. Oh, yes, of course. I'm not seeing it though. I'm going to export it now. I can go ahead, like I said, and do some digging on my own. I just wanted to make sure that my thought was correct, that I would be better to separate it into different data structures and then link them together. Yeah, and I think that probably is. Okay. Then that's all I had. All right, and I think I lied. I don't think we have any documentations on this. Okay. If I run into questions, I'll just submit a support ticket. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for your questions today. Thank you. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. All right, I just want to say again, if you have any questions, please feel free to come off mute and ask the question or post it in the Q&A chat um, and we can discuss that.
Well, really, I just found a good link for the the initial assignment action to send that email. I'm just gonna post it in this chat if you're still here.
All right, doesn't like we have any more questions, so we're just going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you for participating in the Lunch and Learn for today. Please feel free to invite your colleagues to our webinar every Monday through Wednesday at 12 o'clock um, Eastern time. Have a great afternoon, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.